separate him from the precious body and blood of Christ and from the society of all Christians. We His Excellency Bishop Tuck, one of the most maligned bishops of the 20th century, has been attacked on various sides. Many argue that his episcopal line to be invalid. They have laid out many arguments against him in order to prove that he did not have the right intention in confecting the sacrament. And therefore, his sacraments are doubtful and are to be treated as invalid. Many attack Bishop Took's intention to consecrate based on the fact that he consecrated an unworthy man to the Episcopacy. Clemente Dominguez y Gomez, two years after he was consecrated, declared himself to be Pope. Because of this one consecration of a man who began his own church, many judge that all of his following consecrations are to be judged as doubtful. The judgment of sacramental invalidity, based on the unworthiness of the minister or recipient, is a teaching of Donatism, a 4th century heresy condemned by the church. What does the church have to say about the validity of her sacraments? and the validity of the consecration of bishops. Let us now look into what the church has to say with regard to the validity of Bishop Took's sacraments and the validity of the bishops that he had consecrated. against Bishop Took's intention to confer valid sacraments are one, that he was crazy and therefore could not have the proper intention, and two, that he said after the fact that he withheld his intention. All of these arguments put forth to prove these two points are contrary to the teaching of the church on proper sacramental intention and are contrary to the nature of the sacraments. As Pope Leo XIII proves in Apostolice Curre, the Church does not judge about the mind and intention insofar as it is something by its nature internal, but only insofar as it is manifested externally is she bound to judge concerning it. After all, the simple catechism definition of a sacrament is a sacrament is an outward sign instituted by Christ to give grace. Pope Leo XIII makes this very clear that as long as this outward sign is performed correctly, the intention is presumed. A person who has correctly and seriously used the requisite matter and form to effect and confer a sacrament is presumed for that very reason to have intended to do what the church does. On this principle rests the doctrine of a sacrament is truly conferred by the ministry of one who is a heretic or unbaptized, provided that the Catholic rite be employed. In the case of baptism, anyone can validly confect the sacrament, as long as they pour water to the forehead and say the right words. It does not matter whether the minister be Catholic, pagan, or even an outright atheist. As long as they pour the water and say the words, they are intending to do as the church does, despite any personal belief to the contrary. This statement obliterates the arguments against the validity of Bishop Took's sacramental intention, proving Bishop Took's Episcopal consecrations to be valid. If the opposing argument were true, if the minister of a sacrament, by his mind and an intention, insofar it is something by its nature internal, could secretly invalidate a sacrament, contrary to the teachings of Apostolice Curre, no one could possibly know what was a valid sacrament and what is not. No valid ordinations, or consecration of bishops, or baptism. There would be no sacraments that would be certainly valid.
in an article on the SSPX website. The author of the article cites a testimony of Bishop Took testifying about his own mental stability when he performed the consecrations of Palmar de Troya. I testify that I performed the ordinations of Palmar de Troya in full lucidity. I do not have any relations with Palmar de Troya since his chief imparted himself a pope. Imparted it December 19th, 1981, in Toulon, in full possession of my faculties. Pierre Martin Nyong Ding Tuk, Archbishop Titular of Bula Regis. Even though this does not affect the validity of the sacrament, as Pope Leo XIII says, The Church does not judge about the mind and intention insofar it is something by its nature internal, but only insofar it is manifested externally is she bound to judge concerning it. A person who has correctly and seriously used the requisite matter and form to effect and confer a sacrament is presumed for that very reason to have intended to do what the Church does. From where did that idea come that Bishop Took said that he withheld his intention? What are the sources from which people draw this conclusion? Gossiping traditional Catholics spread baseless accusations claiming that Bishop Took withheld his intention when consecrating bishops. Do you hear that Bishop Took withheld his intention when consecrating bishops? No. Bishop Took withheld his intention. I uh, know. There's documentation saying that Bishop Took with his intention in consecrating bishops. Uh, Bishop Took! Uh, he made false bishop! This sounds like a report for Ad Hominem News. Ad Hominem News. Traditional Catholics declare Took bishops to be invalid. Yes, folks, a traditional council of traditional Catholic priests and laity have spoken. Inspired by Donatus Magnus, a 4th century bishop condemned by the church for teaching that one who is unworthy cannot administer valid sacraments. Now it is time for a lesson in history. Three eleven AD, Archdeacon Cicillian was named Bishop of Carthage. However, Bishop Shagundus a nearby primate joined in council of 70 other bishops, declared Tertullian to be invalid, on the basis that Tertullian was reportedly consecrated by a traditus, a traditor, a term used to indicate a man who betrayed the faith by surrendering the sacred books to Diocletian the new persecution leaders. Secundus and his council declared traditors could not act as bishops as they were cut off from the church. They then consecrated Majorinus, a bishop of Carthage. He was then succeeded by Donatus Magnus. The group who followed Donatus, known as the Donatists, believed that the traditor priests and bishops could no longer confect valid sacraments. They believed that only holy ministers could give valid sacraments, and those traditors had to be rebaptized, reordained, and reconsecrated. That movement was condemned by three popes and two saints. One of the saints being St. Augustine of Hippo. Donatism has formed its way into modern times. One form of uh, Donatism is Sedificantism, in which the Donatists say that Vatican II popes are modern day traditors. Instead of having over the sacred books to be burned, he hands over the faith and all her sacraments to the enemy. Because of this, modern day Donatists say he is outside the church and therefore cannot be the Pope. Meanwhile, there are those Donatists who spread certainty of invalidity through the doubt of validity. For example, Bishop took to them because he consecrated unworthy men. Both those unworthy men and all succeeding consecrations must be certainly doubtfully valid. Bishop took is a traditor because he handed over the powers of the episcopacy to the wrong men. What makes these modern Donatists different, however, is the use of modern science of psychology. It is to prove mental incompetence in order to prove the incapability of Bishop Tork to confect valid sacraments. Their judgment they base on conjecture and hearsay, making them great modernist scholars. And just like traditional Donatists, they base the validity on the holiness of the minister and those who receive the sacraments. 
Those who they deem to be valid, they declare to be valid. However, those who they deem unworthy, they declare to be invalid. Now a word from the most preeminent theologians of doubt. Bishop Cook did not have the right intention. Oh, that means he's invalid. He was out of his mind. Oh, that means he's invalid. He withheld his intention. Oh, that means he's invalid. He said the new mass. Oh, that means he's invalid. You keep using the word. I do not think it means what you think it means. Well, we know one thing about his sacraments. Yes, sir. They're doubtful. <laughs> <laughs> but what's this? Pope Leo XIII had this to say in Apostolice Cure. The church does not judge about the mind and intention, insofar as it's something by its nature internal. But insofar as manifested externally is she bound to judge concerning it. A person who has correctly and seriously used the requ requisite matter and form to effect and confer a sacrament is presumed for that very reason to have tended to do what the church does. Once again, in the Pope's own words, a person who has correctly and seriously used the re requisite matter and form to effect and confer a sacrament is presumed for that very reason to have tended to do what the church does. Let's see how our theologians of doubt are going to answer this one. First Bishop LeFebvre says it took bishops who are invalid. Oh, that means he's invalid. Although there is no evidence of Archbishop LeFebvre saying that, our theologians have said it. Hey, looks like he got took. No doubt about that. <laughs> And that's the end of another Ad Hominem News Report. To those who, in the spirit of Donatus, declare the consecration of Bishop Gomez by Archbishop Tork to be invalid, based on the unworthiness of the recipients, Keep in mind the words of St. Athanasius in the year 325 AD. The floor of hell is paved with skulls of bishops. Throughout the history of the church, many unworthy men received the power of the episcopacy, including Judas, ordained and consecrated by Christ himself, who knew Judas would betray him. What is one to learn in the defense of the validity of Bishop Tuck's sacraments? We learn that it is the church that judges the validity of her sacraments, and not the court of public opinion. In the court of democracy, it was the faithful that demanded for Christ to be crucified. To defend the validity of Bishop Tuck's sacramental intention is to defend the integrity of all the sacraments. We can conclude that, in the mind of the Church, those bishops consecrated by Bishop Took are valid bishops. And those who say that his sacraments are doubtful say so in the spirit of Donatism. Bishop Took, one of the most maligned bishops of the 20th century, who is falsely accused of sacramental invalidity, the Church has proven that his sacraments to be valid.